and welcome to the short explanation podcast my name is hi i'm tom is now in a different box because because we have a guest like we promised we have yell grower this is episode nine and we are talking with the expert on vpns so i'm going to have yell introduce herself and she's going to tell us why she's an expert because i think she is oh boy <laughs> Hi everybody, I'm Yael. Um, you can find me at yaelrights.com and I work for Consumer Reports on a, di a free digital security tool called Security Planner, which you can find at securityplanner.org. Great, so let, let's start with, so we talked about VPNs, I don't know, two weeks ago. And, and if you listen to it, we basically said, yeah, these are VPNs. And we've covered this before, but we said, we didn't want to give a recommendation mainly because we didn't really, we don't want to guide people to the wrong thing. You clearly have done extensive research on this. So let's ask you like, what, what are your thoughts on VPNs? Just let's start going with them. Such a great job in the episode talking about why a lot of people might not even need a VPN. Um, because a lot of people will use one because they don't actually know what it does. And they either think it's giving them a level of security they already have or one that it just doesn't offer. Um, and so when people ask me what VPN they use, I, I usually take a step back and, and try to help them figure out if they even need one and what they think they need it for. So, I mean, essentially we said, I mean, you, if you're going to need a VPN, you, you really, I, I want you to sell it to me. Like, why do you need this? And then we talked about like how I work at a school and they block sites. So for me to get on WhatsApp, I actually need something. And so that's what I, that's what I use it for. But other than that, I, like I said, I VPN to my house when I need to. And so I like the fact I, one of the articles that you said talked about, do you actually need one? And so do you have a better idea of what, of why someone would actually need one? Somebody uh, like, say you have a specific use case where <laughs> you don't want your IP address in a log of a very small site where the administrators actually look at the logs or, or yeah, maybe you are in a school or a coffee shop where you know the person who runs the Wi-Fi network and you don't want them to like know you and what you're looking at necessarily. Um, and then, or just like that extra layer of protection, if you're doing everything else you need to do to be secure online and you're like, well, some, like maybe there's a small part of the site that's not encrypted and, I want that like tiny little extra bit of protection then. Yeah. And then, and then of course you mentioned circumvention and that's true. Like they use that in other countries a lot. Like there's mm -hmm. that use case. So, circumvention. Yeah. And then a lot of people try to use it to get um, TV from other countries, but I've never really had luck with that myself. So I, I found that when I try to use a VPN for that, it might work for a day and then it won't work the next day. So like, um, aside from not wanting to recommend anything illegal, like I, I just don't think it works that consistently enough for me to be like, oh yeah, you should totally use this to watch whatever it is from England, BBC or whatever. I, the expert told yeah. us that our show was good. So I want to just go on that record <laughs> right there. That's it. Okay. Good show. Thanks everyone yeah. for listening. We've been vindicated. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I, I totally agree with you. Anytime I have used uh, a VPN to like switch my Netflix location to, you know, watch episodes that are out in the States, uh, that's been exactly my experience. You know, it'll work for anywhere from six hours to a couple days. And then that IP gets flagged by Netflix. And then you've got to either like hopefully not find a new host, but you definitely have to find a new region or server to hook up to. So can we... Because I've used um, WireGuard to try to, like, I, I've had, like, just different IP addresses blocked that, like, I just spun something up and it stopped working. It's very frustrating. Mm. I will tell you that our school uses some security box where you just check off what you want blocked. And uh, this is a secret to anybody who works at my school. OpenAI.com has now been blocked. But... If you can find a different OpenAI URL that's not OpenAI.com, that magically works, which is <laughs> also, really annoying. I was doing VPN research for an article when I was in grad school, actually, and I couldn't get into, I couldn't look at VPN websites from school on the school network, and so I went to Tor and I clicked on Tor is blocked in my country. <laughs> That was my way that I was able to like look at VPN science for legitimate research during my lunch break, but whatever. 
<laughs> so <That's> fantastic. <laughs> but I, I noticed that in this big box, WireGuard is not the I think the protocol is not yet established inside VPN. So the school's uh, whatever security software will block open VPN on all the ports, but not WireGuard. Or maybe I'm just routing to my house and they just didn't block my IP. It's one or the other, but uh, as we said on the other show, I just VPN to my house, just like I said, just to get, just to have websites that like WhatsApp like, and Instagram. Instagram is blocked at our school because it's oh. very, very bad. <laughs> yeah, I though you could always just use tons and tons of data and spend lots of money and like tether to your phone, but. Mm. We can't, well, I can't because there's no cell service. Like oh, okay, I, no. I have literally <laughs> no cell service, so it's only Wi-Fi, and there, there's a lot of complaints there. But but that's so we we gave like a legitimate reason there. Um, I mean, we talk about we talk about at a coffee shop everything is HTTPS, and it's probably not as good to connect to a VPN because you're concentrating that one traffic. So so this your article came out last year. I think right last year almost yeah and it was and it was like this big thing and and I just wanted to go through like why you chose what you chose to look at like okay, well, it's, yeah yeah you know it's funny because I've been writing about VPN and I don't consider myself an expert even though you keep calling me that <laughs> but I started writing about VPNs a really long time ago like I wrote I was supposed to do a top five list or top 10 list for Ars Technica and I went back to my editor and I was like I can't do this because we don't know who's telling the truth about things um, and then a few years later like it the industry had matured a little bit and so I was able to write that that kind of breakdown for Wirecutter and then I started working in Consumer Reports and I was like I want to do a more in-depth um, analysis um, than what I did at Wirecutter so because it's a different organization and like we already, I was really lucky because we already had like a built-in digital standard that looks at different, um, uh, like privacy and security metrics. And we also had a testing team run by Steve Blair, and so like I was able to kind of analyze it based on a framework that they already had, which I kind of added to. Um, but yeah, we broke it down into privacy and security, and then we had like another list for things that you can't. It's hard to like um. Uh, if I know that AVPN did something really badly because it was in the papers or like court or something, um, I can write, I know about it, but I can't really compare it to other VPNs because they might be doing the same thing and just not have gotten caught yet. Um, and, and I also focused on like um, sort of uh, deceptive design and like um, the uh, marketing that has the potential to mislead users. And there was a ton of that. I was going to say, I, I spend a lot of time on uh, on YouTube and listening to podcasts, and holy crap, the uh, the VPN ads are so bad. It's like, if you're a gamer, don't get hacked by your competition. Use this VPN. And not only are you introducing lag into that equation, but generally that's not how most multiplayer games work today. You don't directly connect to other people's IP addresses. Right, yeah, and it's not the only way you're gonna get hacked. Like, yeah, exactly. You're gonna get pushed. Like, I don't, I don't know. It's like, you're gonna type you're gonna your credits into a shady website. Exactly. <laughs> like... <laughs> yeah, we had a lot of back and forth. If you look at the um, uh, the report I did, there was like a lot of back and forth between me and different PR, uh, PRs for different organizations. Where I was like, do you think that this has the potential to be misleading? And they're like, absolutely not. And here's why. And it's, it's kind of funny to hear people's explanations. Because I feel like they did a good job trying to defend this practice, even though I don't agree with the practice at all. Like, um, where they're like, well, when you get whole home insurance, it doesn't cover floods. So therefore, when we say you have 100% protection, it's okay if it doesn't include, like, this is the protection people can expect from a VPN. And I'm like, are you holding your the people who are doing these ads for you, your affiliates, to account for that? Because I don't think they a lot of them are. There's actually research from the University of Maryland on kind of decept like what people think VPNs do based on these affiliate um, advertisers on YouTube, and it's not good. <laughs> <laughs> oh <laughs> man, that that was the thing. I mean, we keep on saying, what are they? I mean, we didn't say it as eloquently as you did, but it was just like, well, they're saying it's all, all these great things. And and then you hear that 
that so and so server actually kept logs like they didn't mean to keep logs but they kept logs or tom's example uh two weeks ago was if you're paying with paypal and they claim it's anonymous how anonymous can it be when you pay with paypal or you use coinbase to pay with your whatever cryptocurrency they want to they want to take i'm on an anonymous <laughs> vpn and yet i'm logged into my gmail account and yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> But, yeah. but I think that's a really important thing to say. I mean, and I think people like forget that you're using your VPN to log into your bank, to log into here. You're creating this profile on the exit node. And, and it's like, oh, we're, we're keeping secret. Who are you keeping secret from? And, <laughs> and like. Funny like, story too. Because you yeah. might get in trouble for something someone else does. I, I had my bank shut off once, like years ago, because I was using some sketchy VPN. And they were like, oh, we want to make sure you're not part of this Russian crime ring. <laughs> like, I'm like, oh, I was using, I don't even remember what I was using. So I had to talk to the guy and tell him, like, no, I was just using a VPN. Probably they were on the same VPN. So that's the thing that can happen, too. <laughs> oh, man. I, uh, I, I used to run a lot of my traffic through a whole home VPN at one point in time, uh, which is... Uh, a terrible idea. Don't do it. Uh, but um, random websites would just stop working because once spammers or scammers uh, use the same VPN you are, all of those IP addresses suddenly start getting banned. Like I, I could not watch video games on on Twitch, for instance. Uh, uh, it would yeah. just instantly kick me out with a 403. This happened to me when I set up a DigitalOcean account. I don't remember if it was WireGuard mm -hmm. or Tailscale or what, but I just thought it would be fun to like mess around since i was doing all this writing about vpns and like instantly i couldn't go into my work site because it blocked whatever ip address i was using because there yep. complaints and i'm like i'm not gonna spin this up all over again like this took forever <laughs> like, <you know? laughs> so, so yeah that can happen but i don't know i do still use a vpn sometimes like um if i'm doing an investigation like if there's certain circumstances where i'm like well i just would feel a little better spending this many hours on this website without like using my home ip address so i mm. do still use it sometimes just not i used to be way more obsessive about it it's it's i mean we got to the point that 5g is so ubiquitous everywhere that i just tell people if you can just stay on data it's just so much better if that's yeah. what you want to do if you're at the coffee shop just tether don't don't you don't need to connect it gets yeah. expensive though Oh. I guess it depends on your data plan, but yeah, yeah, no, that's totally it. I mean, I mean, at work I have Wi-Fi, and at home I have Wi-Fi. It's just the time in the car that I drive that I don't have Wi-Fi, but that's because I have a pretty boring life. But it, I mean, I like I'm I'm looking through the wire cutter article, and I like how there was a section here of of like you were saying of uh, oopsies of where you caught people doing something like kind of shady. Yeah. And David Wirtz has been updating the wire cutter article. So he's, um, he's great. Yeah. And he, yeah, he's, but yeah, we had a list. There's always so many things like there was the express VPN stuff. And I don't know. I wonder like, is there an expiration date on that? Like, I wonder what the, because every once in a while, a VPN that has done something very shady in the past will be like, Oh no, we're better now. We got bought by someone and now we're good. And I'm like, I don't know. Like, like I still don't trust you. <laughs> you know? Like you, like just a year ago, you did X, or I, I don't know. Like, is there? That's something I've thought about. Where I'm like, well, like I feel like it should take time. You can't just like say, oh, we're better now, and like expect people to trust you. Like it takes a long time to build that trust. Um, and so when you, you know, keep somebody in your company even after they were spying on journalists and activists on behalf of another country, like a hostile country. Like, it's like you can't just be like, oh, we're good now. Like, I don't know. I, I almost wish that these VPN companies would be faced with uh, the same kind of subpoenas that Signal has publicly published, right? Where, where a government entity said, hey, give us all of the data you have on this user and you know the signal foundation handed them a paper and posted it on the internet uh saying yeah here's the uh the unix timestamp of when the account was created and the unix timestamp of the last time it contacted the signal servers and 
That's literally all we can give you. That's all we have. Here are the legal papers. And I realize not every VPN company is going to be sued at every moment of the day. So like that kind of data is really hard to get. But I just wish it were a thing, right? Because it would make few... stuff so easy. Like PIA, and this was like before prior ownership, like there was a point in time where they could not give data over to the gov to police, I think it was, because they just didn't have that data. So it does mm. happen every once in a while, but then it's like, it's like, how long is that good for? Because these companies change ownership and change policies and like get bought out and like, I don't know. It's just like, um, yeah, it's weird. Um, there are some of them do publish transparency reports, which I think is really cool, but they don't have a lot of detail. But I feel like sometimes it almost seems like it's too late. Like, um, like I know like Proton, I don't think it was Proton VPN. I think it was Proton Mail. Like everybody really trusted that they wouldn't share data with other governments because they were like, oh, it has to be approved by Swiss courts. And like something was approved by Swiss courts because I believe they might have understated like the like how how that can happen. <laughs> we did talk about was, like, that. Shocked and surprised. We we did yeah. talk about that when that happened, but it yeah it's it's one of those, and we keep on saying it's it's you're you're trusting the company and you're trusting the company, and the problem is that when like you said when that company gets bought out or changed ownerships, you don't know what's going on and they're just keeping it there, and yeah, so yeah. Yeah, and it's really hard too because it's like um all we can all we can really look at is in a lot of cases it's just their documentation and like what do they say that they're going to do? And some of them might be doing better than their documentation says, but we just don't know. Like but then mm -hmm. I don't think they should get credit for that because they could change that policy without having to change anything in writing. But it's like I don't know. So we know that we know from things like video that sometimes companies aren't exactly forthright about like there has been companies that have said in the past they have ended encryption or only local uh, storage and then it turns out that that wasn't the case so it's like i don't know a lot of this is it's so frustrating to try to analyze because you're guessing like a lot of it is a guessing game and just using these proxies for trust in the other version of the term proxy huh. <laughs> the non-vpn version of the word <laughs> that sounds so, like a fantastic domain for a vpn trust review website though <laughs> proxy.com owned by no i'm just kidding no but some of these sites review sites are owned by the vpn so that's yeah. another that's another thing well my my friend said um i don't remember this was like a year or two ago we need to make a vpn review thing like cr like don't don't associate with yourself but just complete spam and just throw affiliate links and say this is cool and let's promote it and whatever we get a little bit I think I signed up for NordVPN's affiliate thing just to see it out. And I just kept on getting emails. It was like four a day. Let's do this. Let's show you how to think. And if they're spending all this time trying to get me to advertise, how good or how good or how great are they? And it just, that was a little scary to me. And I said, there is a guy, I'm not going to give him publicity by saying the name of the site, <laughs> but like there is a VPN site that I feel like that's what this person's whole like business model is, is like he will sign up for every VPN and like create different variations of lists using affiliate links. <laughs> and then also like try to like, like do provocative YouTube videos to like get people mad at him so that people will go to his site and watch these videos where he's like, promoting vpns to try to get a cut I, I don't know it's kind of pathetic but <laughs> let's let's talk about so what did we find i mean did, do you have a favorite one now yeah i it's mulvad mulvad is my favorite um and mozilla vpn which is a mulvad um it's like a white label mulvad and then ivpn for a while did well in our testing i know that in the latest wire cutter review that david did um, they hadn't had an audit in the past year of their infrastructure, but I think they're planning one, but that's one that's done well in the past. And then um, uh, Tunnel Bear didn't, like, I think that they are listed now in Wirecutter, but they were not one of the ones, uh, one of our picks, because I looked for, so we looked at, like, privacy and security, but I also wanted to make sure that they accurately represented their services, and that was 
like the ones that did was like IVPN, Mo- Mozilla, Movad, and Tunnel Bear. And then I looked at whether it was open source. Um, and there was a few, uh, it was like IVPN, Mozilla, Movad, KIA, and like Proton VPN were open source. And then I looked for recent public audits that were p- publicly available because I think that they have changed this, but for a while, NordVPN had audits, but you could, you had to like log into Nord account or request it if you were a journalist uh and i think that they're making theirs public now or planning on it um but yeah those were like some of the things that we looked for and then it's funny because the tests that they did for wire cutter and the ones that we did for consumer reports were like completely different i mean there were some similarities but we tested a lot of different things like we added on a ton of other things and i feel like mulvad is one of the ones that always does the best like no matter what kind of tests you throw at it um and then i don't think that Wirecutter looked at mozilla because it was just a white label mulvad uh, but yeah mulvad mulvad does really well it still didn't get our highest score like it didn't like consumer reports has different like color coding and like the best one is like a like a dark green and nobody got that so it was but, like the lighter shade of green. i mean i saw that and i'm like that, that doesn't make me feel good that there's nothing that got the dark green like they all had faults the, yeah, so did, they all had issues. did you test uh any of them roll your own um like oh, trail of bits is that that's that's what it is trail of bits algo no because we were writing for like and that's why i was like huh you talked about some of these in the last um episode or maybe it was two episodes ago like algo and then there's um streisand and like a lot of people are using pi um and and like you know wire guard and tail scale like we didn't test any of those because we thought that like given our readership they would have trouble setting them up which i think is really different than your audience here who would probably have an easier time um i know that i myself have messed around with it a little bit and um i don't know i i we tried my friend and i tried to set up WireGuard, and we found it really frustrating and then we tried to we were one of those people that like two of those people i guess that were like oh my god tail scale's amazing this is sickening how good it is and it's so easy so we were on the tail scale bandwagon of course like huge wire guard fans is, you know wrote the protocol <laughs> like, well um, we are on, we are also on the tail scale bandwagon <laughs> very much so <laughs> i mean we were on the kamachi bandwagon <laughs> if you go all the way back yeah but i think we wrote about streisand way back when i wrote about vpns for ars technica which was like so long ago it was like the dark ages of i'm gonna look up when this article was but it was yeah. so so that's what we were telling people it's it's if you don't mind connecting to your house so after we like we explained that you didn't really need to have a vpn but if you wanted something we gave that really good uh idea that if you wanted to connect to your internal servers like my internal server that's another reason to have one connected to your house and then we said just use tail scale it is so easy i will say that i did launch tail scale yesterday and i couldn't connect because synology had an update or something and i had to re-authenticate but i couldn't because i wasn't home so that really really made that was i think that was more of a me problem than anything else but but i also then did the i also like i said i have the raspberry pi because i have pies from years ago and i ran um uh, the Pi VPN uh, st- right. setup was, and that's what we told people. If you want to, if you like, our audience is is a little more tech savvy than just download this and it'll work. It's if you want right. to try this weekend project, that's that's what we have. And but some people are afraid to connect back to their house, so so offering them here's the best VPN and Malvad. I I've heard this before that just always comes up. Tunnel Bear, I was surprised. I felt like Tunnel Bear mm-hmm. was a little like, like, I like was funny. assuming they were super old hats. I didn't, I didn't realize they had. They, you know. I think they just started adding, and I haven't looked at it closely, but I will when we do our update. But mm-hmm. I think they just added WireGuard support. Um, but yeah, they were my first, um, the very first time I reviewed VPNs for WireCutter. I think they were the pick. And everybody was really surprised and they were mad because of their ownership and like (laughs) 
Um, but whatever. Uh, it was like I set the criteria. The VPNs I thought would do well didn't, but I set the criteria. Like you have to be objective about it. But um, I was laughing at your. Uh, so like I when I was scared to try tail scale because everybody talked about how easy it was, and I was really worried that it would not be easy for me, and so I put off trying it for a really long time. But I know people that are like really good with WireGuard and and they still use um, a commercial VPN every now and again just because like um, they're like life is short, you know, <laughs> like it can be a little frustrating. I don't know. Um, yeah, so I guess it depends. I'm not a technologist. I'm not super in the weeds on, like, I needed a lot of help when I was playing around with WireGuard. Like, like I needed a lot of, like, can you get on a video call with me for an hour and we'll, like, press buttons and try to align things and, like, this number, section of numbers has to go here and, like, I can't share my screen because it's not showing up and, like, it was, I have, like, PTSD from it, I think. <laughs> WireGuard from scratch uh, is definitely a project. Uh, it is yeah. it is not easy. There are easier open VPN based solutions just to get something up and running, uh, which is why I'm such a fan of those like automatically generate your home based VPN projects. Because you know yeah. with Pi VPN, you slap an image on an SD card, you plug it in, and then a wizard walks you through the rest. It's really nice. But I was exactly like you when it came to tail scale. I, I heard Haim talking about it. He's like, oh no, it's magical. You have no idea. It's the easiest thing in the world. I was like, yeah, but I've been promised that with so many technologies in the past. There's no way it's that easy. Turns out it's that easy. I know it's like infuriating. It's really good. But yeah. um I will say though that like some of my wire guard issues aside from me not understanding networking, like like um I was using a Mac and I wasn't using whatever flavor of Linux all of the instructions were in. So we had to mm -hmm. do like conversion. We had to do like lin like Linux to Mac and so like I feel like some of that if I feel like it would have been easier to set up if I was if I knew what I was doing it was on a different computer. So And I just wanna it always support tail scale but if you want the free and open source version of it it's called head scale um i but i again because uh, again the idea is that it's all for personal use and if once you get more than personal use it's uh what's it called they start charging I, we, yeah. you're showing the stickers which yeah, I, have stickers. I have wire guard stickers too which i just love the logo it's like a dragon it's so cool i think it's like not on my desk though so i can't show it off but yeah, I was very excited to finally get my wire card stickers. <laughs> One of the Crypto and Privacy Village organizers works for Tailscale. Oh, she wrote cool. the she wrote the puzzle. She writes the puzzles for the Crypto Village. Yeah. So so yeah, and and that's when I heard when she moved there. I was like, I I tried it, and I'm like, this is like Hamachi. That was great. It was so easy. And so what I do is when I get observed by my boss. That's the lesson I do. We install tail scale on all the kids' phones so we can do so. So now they have full access to the internet. And my boss is like, This is a good lesson on security and privacy. And it's too I think scary. what I wanted to do was write like a guide for people. And like, I think the reason we were, we were going to write a guide, we're, we're like, Oh, this documentation isn't great for macOS. Let's write documentation and we can like send it like or like post it somewhere. Um, but we didn't get there. <laughs> we ended up just using tail scale. So. I did get actually I'm lying. I did get it set up but not at the level where I felt like I could share with other people and they not be frustrated. So. Mm -hmm. Oh, I, I totally get that. <laughs> I've got so many <laughs> half baked projects or undocumented cool things laying around. Yeah. I did the thing on setting up um setting up like a a Chromebook so you could have a signal number and not post your real number on twitter or whatever that was really no. cool i did read that 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 is an awesome article yeah i tried to like really explain everything you're doing when you're just cutting and pasting code like someone mm -hmm. else's code um but they had a good explanation themselves too like chromebook and signal do and so i don't know how necessary that piece was but like it was fun it was fun to write so and i'm like here's why we're doing it and then you go on reddit and everybody's like talking shit about it <laughs> sounds like reddit <laughs> Thanks, guys. <laughs> yeah, the somebody worked really hard, and your response is, "This is stupid." It's like, like I'm not the target audience. It's... I'm like the biggest Reddit lurker. Like I'm, I'm, I have like 500 fake accounts, and like, like 
<laughs> I'm always like spinning up a new account because I'm like, I think I've written something about my life in the past under this account. <laughs> <laughs> it should be linked back to me. <laughs> well, I mean, th that's a good segue into when you come on next because our next, not next topic, but our next eventual topic is the big privacy roundup that you did um because you just posted that so if you don't know yael had did this huge gigantic privacy how to opt out of everything now we haven't covered privacy and how to opt out yet which we will but after we do that we're going to bring you back on and we're going to do this again Yay. because cool. that's really cool because we did we again we've spoken about how to opt yourself out of privacy databases and how hard it is and how many there are but you can then be our expert again on on how hard it really is and should you do it and everything else but let's tease that for next time okay yeah that one's that one's a, a doozy i want to have opt-out party we need to get like do you have like rich listeners we need like sponsors i want like a dj and like snacks and like opt-out time like how do we make this less awful and painful for people like i want cupcakes and like campaigns. is this something the crypto and cryptography and privacy village can do Ooh. Is this is this something like a call, like a call for paper, maybe worthwhile for? <laughs> I just don't know if I would want to spend time on DefCon clicking on opt out links. It, we would have to make it really cool. I'd have to think about that. A, a lot of a lot of uh, alcohol and a lot of pizza. Yeah, a lot of alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> I have, look, but I, if any sponsors are listening, we would like to sponsor uh, a virtual opt out show. <laughs> anyway, funny. anyway, I, I joke too that like I want, like when I am updating the guide, I'm like, can somebody like send me cupcakes and play me music while I do this? Because honestly, I've been updating that guide since like 2017 and I'm getting a little burnt out on it. And I'm like, please, like. I, I got a volunteer though. I was like reading some tweet where somebody linked to a couple um, ways to opt out of like direct mail things. And I'm like, can you write me a blurb on this? Because if I do it one more thing, I will die. Like, and they like wrote it up and I added it in. It was amazing. Delegating is amazing. Like, it's well, fantastic. You're, you're that little stick that holds up the entire infrastructure of the internet. And you're that one person in their basement with no, with no respect. <laughs> We don't have basements in Arizona, though. But <laughs> I kind of look like I'm in a basement with these blinky things. So that would be cool. True. <laughs> Full hacker mode. Yes. <laughs> All right. With that said, I think we're we're almost out of time. Is there anything else you want to promote? Anything else you want us to know? Um, I think we're gonna put links in the show notes because we did do um like the big report. It's like 48 yeah. pages and three different VPN articles that'll help people kind of really dig in and figure out. Uh, maybe how to apply this to their use case or what they should be worried about with their favorite VPN that they're mad I didn't mention or whatever. So yeah, and then be cool. and then at the very end, we always promote we have a signal group for our for our show, and anybody who wants to get there, it's completely free. It's a great group of people. We don't know who's in there because we don't ask, uh, but they're there. And if anybody wants to, under at the bottom of every show, we have our email, you can email us and we will throw you in or you can find us. You can find us on Twitter, but mainly Mastodon, or I'm on Mastodon. And I know Yael is at least a little bit. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. And, and Tom's there somewhere. I mean, yeah, I don't <laughs> post much, but I'm there. Yeah. He's a lurker in there, but if you message one, if you message Tom or I, we will get you in there or email the show or whatever it is. And we want topics. And again, tell your friends. And I think that's it. Unless there's anything else, I'm going to, I'm going to call it a night and I'm going to say, let's say goodbye to everybody. I got nothing. Okay. Goodbye everyone. And let's, we want to thank y'all for coming on until next week. We will see you then. Bye everybody. See you everyone. And thank you.